your forecast first. Sponsored by Natax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Take a look at this view. Just beautiful on our roofing dog. I net Foring America camera as the sun sets with the cloud cover out there. We've had rain. We have had some hail out there. It has been an interesting day for sure. You can see these little showers that have continued to kind of move across the area. Very comfortable stuff with a little bit of a breeze though. 15 to 20 mile an hour winds across the area. Temperatures that are only in the 50s right now. As we go throughout the course of this evening, we're going to see those temperatures falling 46 by 11 o'clock. More about the chilly temperatures when we come back. WCIA 3 News starts right now. Now on WCIA 3 News. Champaign County has been removed from Region 6. So what does that mean for business owners if the positivity rate jumps? Parents sued the IHSA so their kids could play fall sports. Find out how a judge ruled today. They're calling for police to be removed from U of I's campus. How this group wants that money to be spent instead. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 6. It doesn't make sense to us. He's talking about the restrictions that might come to Champaign County, all because of a new way public health is looking at COVID numbers. Good evening, I'm Jennifer Roscoe. All this week, we've been telling you the county's testing results have been taken out of Region 6. And here's a look at that region. It goes all the way from Watsika in the north to Alney in the south. IDPH took Champaign County out because they felt the county was skewing the numbers. But now Region 6's positivity rate has shot up. Up and changes could be on the way. WCI 3's Courtney Bunting is live in downtown Urbana. So, Courtney, the question is is it fair to exclude the county from the totals but punish the county if the numbers get too high? Yeah, Jennifer, that's exactly what public health leaders hear. The same question is they're asking that exact same question, especially because they've been working so hard to keep these tighter restrictions in place and keep the positivity rate here down. And if those tighter, even more tighter restrictions do happen here, it could be especially hard on restaurants. For people living in some parts of Illinois, dining out could soon feel a lot like it did months ago. That's because Region 6 is dangerously close to tighter restrictions, as long as Champaign County is excluded from the totals. What is happening currently is more than 20% of statewide testing is happening just in Champaign County. And that is skewing or obscuring the numbers for Champaign, uh, for Region 6. That's because of the large number of tests being done at the U of I. With Champaign County, the positivity rate is around 3%, but without, it's about 7. And three days straight of 8% or higher would mean big changes. The main thing is restaurant and bars, indoor activities restricted from 50% to 25% capacity, and then from 50 people to 25 will be the gathering limit. But public health leaders feel that shouldn't affect Champaign County because its numbers aren't part of the rising total. But now, while the state says we want to remove you guys from the numbers, which increases the positivity rate, but then for mitigation efforts, we want to put you back minus your numbers. It doesn't make sense to us. And those mitigation efforts could seriously hurt restaurants all throughout the region, like the pantry in Tuscola. Because I don't know that we can afford to have a large building like this and not be able to open it and have people come and eat. I also talked to the, one of the owners of Black Dog, which has locations in Champaign and Urbana, and they said if those stricter restrictions were to go into place, they would, of course, follow what the health department, health district decided to do, but they said um, they would try their best and were making good, it was, they were making decent money with takeout and other options, but they said, of course, it would cut down on their profits, but they would do whatever it took to preserve the greater health of the region. Live in Urbana, Courtney Bunting, WCIA 3, your local news leader. All right, Courtney, thank you. Now, we don't know when exactly the governor's office could make their decision about including Champaign County in the mitigation efforts, and we would still have to see three straight days of 8% positivity before that, of course, would happen. For the second straight day, a person in Champaign 
Champaign County has died from the coronavirus. Again, it was a woman in her 80s with underlying health conditions. It's now the 22nd death in the county. The state is reporting 25 more deaths. Almost 8,700 people have lost their lives. There are more than 2,100 new cases. That makes well over 295,000 altogether. The seven-day positivity rate for the state did drop to 3.5%. A follow-up now on the lawsuit against the IHSA. A DuPage County judge has denied a temporary restraining order today against the organization. Some parents from the Chicago suburbs sued to try and get their kids back to playing sports. WCI3's sports director Brett Behrens is here now. I know it's very complicated. We were just talking. It wasn't as if the judge was going to rule today and kids could play football tomorrow. Correct. This is very, very complicated. But the parents essentially filed a class action lawsuit claiming the IHSA they didn't follow its own bylaws and rules when they created a four-season calendar for sports this summer due to COVID-19. They moved several sports like football and volleyball to the spring. They wanted to put an end to that and let the member schools vote and decide if that should be the case. Numerous protests around the state the last few weeks have circled around the fact Illinois is the only Midwest state right now not playing high school football. If the judge would have sided with the plaintiffs in the case, it would have essentially stopped all. Now we'll hear from Judge Fullerton coming up tonight in sports with more on why he decided to rule today. He did kind of give both sides reasonable explanation for this, saying they both had a point, but ultimately he decides to go with the IHSA side. Okay, thank you so much. They say it's a GoFundMe gone wrong. That's what a woman is saying about a funeral fundraiser. Champagne Police told us today they got a complaint about a GoFundMe from earlier this summer. This homeless man had died after an assault and robbery. Sherry Williamson started a GoFundMe for his burial. Williamson said she donated the excess money to charities. But Todd Ledbetter's family said that information didn't check out. So a family member went to police. They're preparing a report on the matter. It's not clear whether or not that will lead to a full investigation. We have new details now. A 16-year-old girl is charged in the death of an only teenager. Officers arrested 18-year-old Rick Medor in Florida yesterday. He's accused in the murder of Kyle Johnson in September. Police also took the 16-year-old girl into custody. She was listed as missing and endangered, but later in the afternoon, an arrest warrant was issued for her. She's facing a charge of first-degree murder by accountability. An update now on a man facing federal charges in Minnesota and Illinois. Michael Harry is expected in federal court next month for his role in the bombing of a Minnesota mosque. He's also charged for trying to set fire to a Champaign Women's Health Clinic. The Clarence man was the ringleader of a small militia group called the White Rabbits. His next federal court date in Illinois is set for March 2021. Shots were fired in Champaign early this morning. Police say it happened at an apartment complex near the corner of Randolph and William. A woman who lives in the building says she's concerned and frustrated because she used to feel safe there, but thinks things have taken a turn for the worse over the past few months. Shots were fired outside these same apartments earlier this year. Police say no one was hurt. And police say more shots were fired in a different area of Champaign about an hour before those shots at Randolph and William Streets. Officers also responded to an area of 5th Street and Beardsley Avenue. No one was hurt, but the shots damaged some homes and cars, like you can see. Dozens of U of I students will march through Urbana and Champaign today demanding that U of I police be removed from campus. It's part of a national movement of students angered by police brutality. WCI3's Jennifer Jensen is live in Urbana. So Jennifer, what do they want instead of police? Jennifer, they want the department's funding to pay for more social workers, crisis intervention professionals, and other methods of de-escalation. They believe that police are responsible for escalating the violence and are a detriment to a healthy and safe society. But the pressing question is, what's the alternative to police intervention if violent crimes are committed on campus, like shootings or armed robberies? This was their response. They're actually responding after things have already occurred. Um, and if they do come while it's occurring, they either escalate the situation further, cause further harm, um, or they don't resolve anything whatsoever. When it comes to issues of violence, who's really enacting large amounts of violence in this country and in our communities is often the police towards our black and brown people.
UIPD did not have a response to this group's demand to defund and get rid of the police on campus. The department said they are taking this time to listen to the community and let their voices be amplified for now. This group just started the march through campus. They said they plan to end at the Police Training Institute in Champaign. So I will have the full story on more of their perspective on this tonight at 10 on WCIA. Live in Urbana, I'm Jennifer Jensen, WCIA 3, your local news leader. Jennifer, thank you so much. Should you be concerned about mail-in voting? My one county clerk says it's just as safe as being there in person. And also tonight. Any kind of way you can make it feel like it normally does is a good thing. There won't be many fans at Atlanta football games this fall. How you can still be there, or at least look like you're there. Well, beautiful sunset tonight again with some clouds, but I know it's been raining out there. It's kind of chilly. We only hit 64 for a high. That's well below normal. It was 41 this morning. More of that cooler air is on the line. There's your record highs and lows when we come back. Details about hail that we had today. Yeah, interesting. Cool night ahead, and we'll talk about the weekend rain next.